Honorable Home Minister of India, Sri Amit Shah, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to welcome you all to the third edition of the Times Now Summit. Today, we are at the dawn of a new era. From underdeveloped to developing to emerging, India has had many tags attached to it through the decades. But as the G20 summit in Bali so clearly established, India's moment on the world stage has truly arrived. When our respected Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, met with Russia's President Putin in September, he told him, the era of war is over. Let's talk peace. In the days that followed, his words resonated through the global leadership. His pivotal role was publicly acknowledged by a majority of UN Security Council's permanent members. And now, they have been adopted by consensus in the Bali Declaration. In a fractured world, he has emerged as a statesman who has the ears of both Washington, D.C. and Moscow. As India takes over the G20 presidency, we are confident our Honorable Prime Minister will deliver on his promise that it will be inclusive, ambitious, and will work as a catalyst of global change. Even as India takes center stage politically and diplomatically, it has been racing up the economic pecking order too. In a karmic twist, it recently overtook the United Kingdom, its former colonial ruler, to become the world's fifth largest economy. It is set to overtake Germany and Japan to become one of the world's top three economies in the next few years. The stock market is touching new highs. India is seen as the most attractive destination for sovereign wealth funds after the US. And we are home to the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. At a time when some of the biggest economies are staring at a recession, India remains a high growth bright spot on the global map. But the most important aspect of the rise of a new India is that is being driven not just by the mind, but equally by the heart, by Hridaya. If, if proof were required of this, it comes in the form of center's food subsidy expenditure, which is set to cross rupees 3 lakh crores. That's primarily because of the free food grain scheme under the PM Garib, Garib Kalyan An Yojana. What makes these giant strides all the more impressive is that we are not run by diktat and dictatorship. We are a vibrant democracy. Our elections, where hundreds of millions come out to vote peacefully, are a matter of great pride and joy. Yes, we face formidable challenges. Foremost among them is the fact that we are in a hostile neighborhood. There are many who would like to block our progress towards peace and stability. But as a prime minister and a home minister have demonstrated time and again, while India does not seek conflict, it will not compromise on the safety and security of Indian citizens. It has been the endeavor of Times Now Summit to assess the opportunities as well as the threats that lie ahead. We are extremely grateful for the consistent support we have received from the national leadership. Our Prime Minister flagged off the first edition of the summit in 2019. And I want to express my deepest gratitude to our Home Minister for his unstinting encouragement through the years. He unveiled the new agenda for India at the second edition in 2021, when he also inaugurated our Hindi news channel Times Now Nabharat, which has grown to become a significant voice in the news space in a short span. 
This year, as the Times Now Summit strives to attain even greater stature, Shri Amit Shah has once again honored us with his presence. May I now request the Vice Chairman and Managing Director of the Times Group, Mr. Samir Jain, to kindly escort the Honorable Home Minister of India to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for a big round of applause.